think most of my education is from blowing stuff up. So I'm here tonight in my shed. That's why it looks a little different. And the reason why I'm in here is to dig up an old project that I did from four years ago. The Janky Cycle Gas uh, bike. And it has a nitrous kit on it. The same one that Tucker got used in his paramotor video. And I want to go through a few things of why it probably didn't work for him as well as he was expecting. You can see the carburetor is falling off. There's a gas tank. And the nitrous kit is around here somewhere. The reason why it's stashed here is because the forks actually broke. But let's get the engine off. So as you can see, my uh, nitrous kit is a, is a little older version. But pretty much the same one. See the nitrous got tube here. Um, it was mounted up to the handlebars. I think it was, I believe it was this side. Um, but same kind of deal. Put the 16 gram uh, thing in there. And then um, let me bring you around here. So this is where it actually goes into the engine. As you can see, it's as close to the actual head as you can get. And the carburetor is actually on this side. Uh, this carburetor actually mounted oh, into this hole. And uh, that's pretty much what you need to do to get this so your carb doesn't ice. Because uh, any of you guys who've flown airplanes will know that carb ice is very bad. For any of you guys who've flown airplanes before, uh, carb ice is a pretty big deal. Uh, that's why you have carb heat. And uh, if, you, if you're running your airplane uh, low RPM or whatever, you can get icing in there and basically it messes up the carburetor. So you don't want to be spraying ice or really cold air because really cold air will uh, basically freeze the water that's in the air, the water molecules, and it will create ice and plug up all the little holes in the carb. So that's why you want to inject after the carb. So how does nitrous actually make power? Uh, nitrous has more oxygen in it, and more oxygen gonna add, is going to change your ratio. So like your 14.7 for gasoline to one uh, air to fuel, when you have more content of oxygen, you need uh, less actual total air because the oxygen content is higher. So that's one of the reasons it makes power. The other one is the nitrogen and nitrous oxide. Nitrogen molecules are very big, and they uh, react to heat very, very well. So the more you heat them, they, get, they expand well and they push the piston down. So you need nitrogen and you need oxygen, which nitrous oxide has the, a good amount of both. Um, the other reason why is because nitrous is uh, stored in the liquid form at about 900 PSI. And when that liquid turns into a vapor, uh, you have some kind of uh, phenomena called, I think it's latent heat of evaporation, Put it in the comments, I'm sure that's wrong. But anyway, something from, from the phase change, it takes energy from the surrounding area to do that. So it subtract, it, it basically, it makes everything cold, the charge air cold that's going in your engine, which means colder, you can pack the molecules of air more tightly, means more molecules of stuff, fuel and air, is going into your uh, piston or your cylinder. So more equals better because more things equals more explosion equals more pushing on the piston. It's basically a supercharger. Um, it's not a mechanical supercharger like you're thinking like with a belt and it's not a supercharger that's connected to your exhaust like a turbo. It is a chemical supercharger. It compacts the air in and it has a chemically higher amount of oxygen. So it is a chemical supercharger. Um, and for airplanes, aircrafts, um, it's nice because it's lightweight and it's simple. However, if you don't add any more fuel, it's not going to add any power because you're just, well, if you have too much oxygen, you're just going to get better fuel economy. If you have too much fuel, you're not going to get any more power either. It's just called rich or rolling coal, as you can see, like black clouds coming out of people's cars. It doesn't make any more power. It does have another side effect though. Being too rich will scavenge heat out of the cylinder. So, uh, and that is good for the structural integrity of the, of the actual engine. And what I wanted to say about that is I actually had a structural failure in this engine with the nitrous and it has to do with the head bolts. So these are the head bolts here. There's four of them on this. And what they do is they hold the head and the cylinder onto the actual main shaft and the piston is inside of here. 
I'll take it apart in a minute to show you guys. But basically what happened is these bolts are made out of the finest grade Chinesium and they actually stretched with all that pressure inside of this cylinder inside. And it actually lifted the head and it was a chirping noise and you, as a head gasket was leaking air out of this. Um, right there, that head gasket, not the zip tie, was actually leaking air there. Okay, so obviously, you know, with cheap hardware and stuff, you're gonna have, uh, you might have a structural failure. There's also been a structural failure. So for some of you don't know, I am a, a private pilot. I'm a licensed pilot. And um, we do, I do belong to a flying club and we have some one, Cessna 172s. And uh, somebody didn't put the mixture full rich when they descended. And uh, descending is also kind of like supercharging because there's more air at sea level than there is higher up. Anyway, getting off a tangent here. But um, a lot of engines cannot take the structural load of a full throttle at max peak, uh, 14.7 per one. So what they will do is they will add extra fuel to scavenge some of that heat out of there. And it allows, it allows the engine to make full power, but it actually takes the heat out of the engine in the form of the same thing like the nitrous, liquid to a gas, it, it absorbs um, the energy, all the heat, thermal energy from the cylinder and exited out the exhaust pipe. So it's the same principle as nitrous, but going out instead of in. So that's, a, that's why, you know, typically you'll be running 12 to 1, 11 to 1, 10 to 1 when you're running like booze or um, in a race car or something like that. You'll be running rich because you're scavenging heat out of the engine. So, uh, like I said before, with the airplane, this, the engine cannot handle, even without nitrous or power adders, full throttle um, at peak power. And it actually fractured the bolts, the, the nuts actually popped off. And one of the cylinders was starting to actually detach from the engine um, on the airplane engine. So I'm sure that was scary for whoever did that. Luckily, I didn't blow that up, but I did get the free knowledge from it. So um, yeah, make sure if you're flying, make sure you uh, full rich before you descend. Um, but back to this, the structure, you're gonna be limited by the structure integrity of the engine. So whether it's the head bolts, um, there's other things to consider with nitrous. All right, so uh, this thing doesn't really have a whole lot of nuts left because they fall off from the vibration. So there's just a lot of zip ties. I'm just gonna go around and start cutting them. And we're gonna detach this engine one piece at a time from this bicycle. Since I've disassembled this part here, uh, I've got to push this in for the clutch to actually go uh, get released. So hopefully I'll be able to get it with this. Disconnecting these wires here and this should be ready to come off. Why? What's wrong? Oh, oh there's, there's a zip tie here. I need you guys to help me. Ah, there we go. And there we have it. I know it's, a, it's not the same as a paramotor, but the, I mean, now there's a clutch and stuff, which probably isn't on there. But uh, yeah, let's get this thing opened up and I'll show you inside. Let's talk real quick. do is I'm going to take the head bolts off you guys can see what's inside of here so there's a bunch of washers so this is the head or the head cap or whatever, you can see the spark plug is right there. 
Um, this right here is what they call the jug or the cylinder. We've got our uh, head gasket, usually like in airplanes. This whole thing right here is going to be one piece. So I don't know if that's going to be one piece or multiple pieces like this. It's better if it doesn't have the head gasket because it can't leak. I would not really recommend this, but I don't plan on using this engine again, so. Okay, you can see I split the case. And this is the jug. You can see the exhaust port there. Intake port here. Nitrous import right here. And I did a little bit of porting and polishing, but we're not going to get into that video, into this video. And you got your transfer ports here. And then you got your piston. See, this goes up and down like this. There's also a connecting rod right there. And your piston pin or wrist pin there. And you got your piston rings. All right, the next part I want to show you guys is the carburetor. And this one I just uh, took apart. This air filter here, you take that off. Um, how this carburetor works is there's a throttle plate. You can see it a little bit better from the in intake side, or the uh, manifold side, I'm sorry. But basically the throttle cable moves this door. And this is what the door looks like. Sometimes there's a butterfly valve. And then you can see in there, there's the little bar in there. That's where the fuel comes out. And on this one, so the one I did when I was running nitrous was actually a different carb. But there's a jet in the bottom. So you have your float. And this thing right here, this is the jet. So in order to get more fuel out of your carb, you got to change this jet. And you can do that by two ways. If you can get a bigger jet, you can just unscrew it. And you can get a jet kit. So there's a little tiny hole in there. You can kind of see it. What you got to do is you got to enlarge that hole. And the way I did it is I bought these drill bits. And these drill bits are tiny, very, very tiny. Um, and how you get them out is there's the sizes up here. These are in wire gauge, American wire gauge. And that's so basically the higher the number, the smaller the bit. Now, you see how tiny this bit is. This bit is so tiny that if you try to put it in a drill, even if you tighten that chuck all the way up, you're going to try to put this in. And it's loose. So you need an adapter. I'll leave this also in the description. This is a chuck adapter. It's a mini chuck. Basically, you put the drill bit in this mini chuck like that, and then you put the mini chuck in the other chuck. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this drill bit back before I lose it into the abyss. All right, so basically what you do at that point is you take your jet, you go through each drill bit, you find out which one barely fits in there, and then you know that's the size you're at. So you get out a piece of paper, write it down, like I'm on like 73, and then you just drill out. You go one bigger, so 72, and you drill it, and then you put everything back together, run it, and you see if you get any more power. If you're starting to get a little bit more power, take it all apart, drill it out to 71, and then you'll get to a point where you're not getting any power anymore, that's when you stop. You're gonna need more, you're gonna need to drill it out for more nitrous. Problem is, uh, it's gonna run crappier when you're not running nitrous. So there's a trade-off there between running normally and running with nitrous. So you basically need two different jets. You need a nitrous jet and you need a regular jet. 
So you can, when you, you're going to use nitrous, you're going to put the nitrous jet in, you're going to use it, and then you can take it out and put your regular jet in so you can fly around normally after you run out of the little 16 gram bottles. So that's a pain, but you can buy jet kits online or you can make your, modify your own jet. I do want to talk about something else. It's not really an issue with these. I, I, there's something called projected tip spark plugs. Guys, don't use this. Use a spark plug socket. This project's pretty much getting scrapped. So that's why I kind of don't care. But if you care about your stuff, don't use these. Okay, spark plugs. So as you can see, this is a regular spark plug. A projected tip, that little piece of porcelain right there will actually extend past the threads here and this ground strap will actually extend more. The reason why that's bad for nitrous is because this strap right here, this ground strap, the more exposed it is um, away from all this thermal mass here, it's gonna get really red hot and the longer you're on the nitrous, this thing, this ground strap will get so hot, it will actually ignite your fuel mixture before the spark and that's bad news. You don't want that so um, you can always cut the ground scrap back too if you're having that issue. The other thing is, is this heat range is on spark plugs. You can go colder and hotter. You're going to want to go colder every time you're making more power so that the uh, spark plug except the tip itself, same thing, doesn't get red hot and ignite the mixture before um, the spark goes off. Um, I don't think it's going to be an issue with uh, something like a paramotor, especially with the little 16 grams because you're going to go through it so fast. And it's probably not going to have a lot of time to heat up. The last thing I want to talk about is they talk about shot in the video and the little 16 gram, where is it? I have one right here. This is not a shot, this is a container. The shot is dictated by the hole, the orifice hole of where that's actually spraying out of. So, um, so there's a hole size, uh, certain hole sizes or hole sizes are linked to the amount of uh, horsepower addition that you're going to get from it. So like. A 15 shot is 15 horsepower, a 50 shot is 50 horsepower, and there's like corresponding jet sizes or like hole sizes that go with that. But the container size doesn't matter is when you're talking about shots. Um, you can have a 10 pound bottle, 15 pound bottle, um, a 16 gram bottle. But that's, uh, that's not the same as a shot when you hear talking about a 100 shot or whatever. So all in all, I'm surprised you guys made it this far. Um, if you would, give me a subscribe. I'm trying to make it to a thousand subscribers. I think I'm almost there and hopefully this video will take us there. Hold on, I gotta do a cat delete. And hopefully I'll get to see you guys in the next one and hopefully I answered some of your questions and concerns about using nitrous. Oh, one last thing that I really wanna talk about and it has nothing to do with this bike. It has everything to do with paramotors and that is propellers. Didn't talk about this at all. It obviously wasn't an issue for me at the on the bike because there is no propeller, but propeller cavitation. The pitch on the actual propeller, um, try to give you an example here. If this is the drive shaft, right? And you have a, your propeller, the angle of the propeller this way will dictate the speed of the propeller. The more aggressive so this this would be like a flat propeller like this the more rake that you have i just dropped a drill bit anyway the more rake that or the more pitch that you have the more power the more air is going to push so the more uh power you're going to need and engines like that run at a certain rpm so you need to run that in that power RPM. You need your propeller to be pitched correctly so you can get to that power because if it's pitched too much, your engine won't have enough power to get it there. If it's pitched too little, your engine will overspeed the propeller. And the propeller, what happens is it gets to a point where it starts cavitating. What is cavitating? It's, it's spinning so fast that it's no longer pushing air. It's just spinning. So you don't want to get to that cavitation point and I feel like 
maybe that was a possibility that is happening on the paramotor. Maybe you're, it's operating so close to the limit by adding extra RPM, you're not gaining any more power because the propeller is cavitating. So you would need a more aggressive propeller for nitrous. And that's a possibility too. So thank you guys. And we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully I'll be applying on a paramotor soon. My neighbor just got one. And even though I just flew an airplane today, went down to Arcadia for some $147 tacos, hopefully I'll be able to get on that paramotor soon because flying is an awesome experience.